What's going on everybody? Welcome back to another video on my rally build. So today I'm picking up right where I left off. So last thing I did was I finished the seat mounts. Uh, today is Friday and I'm going to try to get the door bars done. Um, I want to get the door bars done today. Hopefully, we'll see. Um, the A-pillar support bar tomorrow. Uh, possibly harness bars as well and then start on the dash bar mounts and whatnot but uh, that's weekend plans whatnot so try to knock this out as quickly as possible so I'm gonna stop talking and get right into it all right so since I'm starting on the door bars I'm going to talk a little bit about the rules uh, and the choices that you have so you have a few options that you can actually choose from when it comes to making door bars for NASA uh, rally America really doesn't apply anymore because I uh, they don't really exist. They kind of do, but whatever. That's a different topic. Uh, American Rally Association, same thing. They all follow the FIA rules. Um, the only difference is the sill bar. So NASA requires a sill bar. ARA just started requiring a sill bar this year. Um, and I don't think Rally America uh, requires a sill bar, but like I said, that doesn't really matter anyway. Um, so now you've got three different options to choose from. Uh, NASCAR bars are not one of them. Uh, if you don't know what I'm talking about, NASCAR style bars are the cars that you see on typical drift cars um, that come out into the door and then go back and they usually have vertical bars uh, in between them. So the options that I do have are the typical X that you see in a lot of rally cars uh, and there's two different ways to make that. Um, there's one where you do all straight bars, so you do one continuous bar and then two smaller bars notched into it and then you gusset the sides. Um, that's one way to do it. Another way is to make like a V or a shallow U, uh, depends on how you look at it. And it's two continuous bars with one bend in it uh, near the center, so they come down, bend up, and then the bottom one bends up and then comes back down. Um, they usually meet in the center and are completely welded together uh, where the like farthest radius of the bends actually meet uh, to add a little bit more structural integrity and you also gusset it as well. Now your next option that you can do is one straight bar over the top and then a V or a U of one continuous bar coming down and then back up to meet that bar. Uh, I don't think I've ever actually seen that in a car. Uh, it's kind of a weird design to make, um, but it's probably there. Uh, the benefit of that, you don't have to gusset it. So there's less gusseting involved, less work, so that's good. Um, depends on how you look at it though. If you're trying to build the safest cage, um, gusseting really isn't that big of a deal. Uh, there's definitely easier ways around it, like not adding all these optional bars like I did um, if you want less work, but you want an approved cage. Uh, and lastly, the final approved design that you can do is just one sill bar and then one bar running from here down to the lower joint. That is by far the easiest one that you can do uh, because when you add in your A-pillar support bar, which runs from that joint down where the cage feet is, or cage foot, uh, it comes all the way up here to within six inches of where the windshield bar actually meets up. Um, so when you make that with the X, obviously the X is going to intersect that. So you can't have one continuous tube. Um, and to make that, you have to intersect it, which means two more gussets in there and then two more gussets for the actual X. So that's four gussets per side. So if you make one continuous tube going straight down, it saves you having to make four gussets. But those are all the options that you have as per the FIA rules. Um, so if you decide that you want to build a cage and you're just going for the easiest one just to get you on stage the quickest, uh, by far the easiest one is just the sill bar, which is really easy to add, and then the one continuous bar, because uh, it just saves you a lot of time. Uh, it definitely would be a lot less material, uh, a lot less gusseting, and stuff like that. So that's good if that's what you're looking for. Um, I'm not really looking for that. I'm I want the safest gauge that I can have uh, and I don't really care for a little bit more time working on the car uh, or a little bit more material which means more weight and more cost. Uh, it's not that big of a deal to me. Anyway, I'm done talking about it. Uh, I've discussed all the rules. Uh, if you want to read the rules or anything like that, just give FIA 253 cage rules a Google um, and you'll find all the rules that you'll need. Uh, but I'm actually going to get started on the door bars now because like I said, I'm on a tight timeline and I'm already way past schedule on when I wanted to be done with the cage. Um, so try to knock out as many things as I can this weekend uh, so that way I can actually get done maybe this weekend, we'll see, I don't know. Uh, so I'm going to get started on this right now. Alright, this is going to be a little bit difficult for me to show exactly kind of where I have pictured in my head uh, how I want it to look. Um, 
You can use tape, but like tape is kind of cumbersome. Uh, and it really only works well if you're actually doing like a straight bar, uh, two straight bars and no bends in them, and you're just connecting them. You want to figure out exactly where like the X is going to bisect. Um, I'm not because it's not going to be symmetrical. I mean, it'll be symmetrical left to right, uh, but it's not going to be the same um, bend coming down. It's going to be more shallow coming up, uh, more of a steeper bend coming down, and then like gradually coming up to the dash bar level. Because I want to meet up with the dash bar, um, or at least. Um, the top of where I have my uh, forward strut bar uh, bracing going forward. Um, that way I can get some sort of a node going on. Uh, anyway, I'm going to try to figure this out and get my exact measurements as I go along. This tool is pretty neat. I don't know if you guys uh, have seen me use it. I haven't really shown it before. Um, but it's just a, an electric angle finder pretty much and it's just two straight edges. Uh, you align it uh, to whatever straight edge you want. So like I put it on a flat surface that I know is actually straight and then I zeroize it on the angle finder and then from there uh, you just move it and as you slide it, it'll give you the degrees that you're actually moving. Um, so it's pretty good for finding like weird angles um, and it's really good for like checking it when it's in the bender because the bender's not perfect um, and it's a lot easier than checking it uh, like pulling it out of the bender and then checking it. So it's just a good tool to have. I think it was pretty cheap. I think it was like 15 bucks on Amazon or something like that. Um, there's definitely better ones that you can get, but this one worked pretty good. Um, but yeah, I'll try to start getting my measurements that I need. All right, I think I have enough data to get my first bar uh, roughly bent up um, and figure it out. So I'm going to do the start point uh, 14 and a half inches from this side and that should put the bend to where uh, the actual radius of the bend begins like right around right here. Uh, again, imagination time. Um, and then it'll continue the bend and go like this down to here. So it'll be like relatively quick angle um, and then come back down and be pretty gradual. So my first bend radius that I'm going to try for is 35 degrees, um, overall length of 52 inches. Um, I definitely left quite a few extra inches on there, so I'm going to have to trim off quite a bit, uh, but I'm not using a very precise way of measuring as you can probably tell right now. So I don't want to waste the tube. I'd rather waste six inches rather than 48 if that's what it actually is. So I'm going to grab a tube, measure it and cut it. trim up that notch well enough to get it to fit in there decently um, and I think I like where it's moved back uh, it looks good to me <laughs> um, always makes me think of that guy from uh, what's that movie uh, Mr. Deeds looks good to me uh, <laughs> anyway um, so I'm gonna mark this side trim it a little bit because it's a little too long right now um, and then notch it and hopefully I don't mess up the notch and make this tube uh, but we'll see yeah let's see and here's the final fitment after cleaning it up. Um, as you can see, it sits a lot better on there. So I'll actually be able to weld it to the sill bar as well as here. And there's like no gaps all the way around. Uh, there's a tiny gap like right here, but uh, that's really not a big deal. Everywhere else is like super close and touching. Um, same with this one down here. Uh, so all that's good. I can move on to the top bar now. Um, and that should be simple because we already got an idea of where we want to actually put our X. The amount of time that I spend looking for something that I just have is ridiculous. I didn't go anywhere, I'm missing my tape measure. And I've got like 12 of them. All right, now I found it. So once again, reminder of the rule, just so I can think about it mostly. Um, cannot go more than halfway uh, up of the door frame, whatever. Um, so I'm gonna get the measurement from 
uh, the bottom of the door frame to the top, uh, at least where the rear is going to connect. Um, and then I figure out exactly how high I can put it and go relatively close just so I am well within compliance with the rules, uh, but not too far to where it's annoying to get in and out of the car or to do anything in the back here. So I need to be below my dirt smudge that I put. That's pretty precise. So I'll just go like right around here. That's not too bad. And I'll come down here um, and then back over at a shallow angle, just the same way as this one. So I'm not sure if I want to note it with the dash bar or the front intrusion bars. Um, I should have put them at the same level, uh, but the dash bar had to go at that level, that way for ease of mounting the dash. And uh, I really couldn't get those intrusion bars any higher without like going through like five layers of the car instead of the two that I did. So that would have been really annoying to have to do that. But I don't know, I'll probably just match it up to the intrusion bars because you won't even see the dash bar anyway. Um, and I would rather have the node coming from the front and then pretty much connecting all the way back to the car. Um, I think that would be a good connection. Um, so that's probably what I'll do, and it's a little bit lower, uh, so it'll make getting in and out of the car a little bit easier. I want to use the touch, that way I can weld them together, um, just for some extra supportability, you know. Uh, so I want these two to be as close as possible with the joints, um, so I'm going to make this side a little bit longer, uh, and that side a little bit longer too, uh, just so I can move them left to right and whatnot. Um, and I don't have to worry about messing up and like ending up with a joint that's back here and that looks hokey um, and it's not as strong as it could be. Um, so, you go roughly here, kind of eyeball the angle. Always good to use your eyeballs. Very precise measurement tool here. 19 inches. Uh, I'm going to start the bend. Just adding about an inch and a half-ish to the end of it. I'll just call it 51 again. We have a couple inches to play with again. Um, now we need the angle. All right, so we're gonna give it a shot at 34 degrees. So this one uh, should be maybe a couple degrees under what I want it to be, uh, but I can always adjust it, like I said. I'm going to grab a tube and bend it. Uh, I'm going to show you guys that because that's pretty boring. Uh, it's just more sped up time lapses. So, yep, uh, I'll be back with another tube. And here it is. All right, so let's see. Jeez. Uh, good thing I added extra because I measured kind of bad. Uh, it's like right there on that one. But it might work. It might be too small. <laughs> uh, the bend looks like it lines up still. It's like barely any sticking out, but there's enough that I can get a good notch. There's enough that I can get a good notch right there. Um, I think I'll give it a try. Uh, notch that side first, and then follow it up with that notch. Finally got it. I just had to slowly massage it into place. Um, so now I just gotta bevel these edges, obviously, before I weld it. And clean up this area so I can actually weld these tubes together. Uh, but they're touching, so this tube doesn't move at all now. Um, <clears throat> I think I'm good at with what it looks like. Um, so I shouldn't hit it with my elbow, because my elbow should be like right here. I'll probably still hit it with my elbow, honestly. Um, but I think it's good. I'm gonna send a picture to the scrutineer just to see if there's anything weird with it uh, before I actually make the other side. So I'll just make that tomorrow after I hear back from him. Uh, but I, for all I know, uh, I really think that this is good um, and it should pass. I've seen it on a lot of cars and there's really no regulation that like the center needs to be in the very center of the door frame or anything like that. So I think it's fine. It doesn't go over half of the door because my mark is like right here. Uh, so that's fine. Uh, definitely plenty of room. I mean, it's tight. Obviously, it's going to be tight, like getting in and out of there, especially with this bar coming up to here. It's a pretty small window getting in and out. But it is a roll cage. It's not really supposed to be that easy to get in and out of, but as best as you can make it, I guess. 
Uh, but yeah, uh, I'm happy with this fitment. So I'm gonna call it for the night. Uh, and send a picture to the scrutineer and make sure everything's good with it. Uh, and if it is, copy the exact designs over to the passenger side tomorrow and knock that out fairly quickly. Uh, that way I can start on the A-pillar support bar. All right, I'm picking up right where I left off. And yeah, I'm wearing the same clothes. I do that a lot on videos. Uh, don't think I'm gross. Just, that's what happens when you get dirty in the garage. You don't want to like trash a whole bunch of clothes. And I don't, I'm not dirty enough, you know, to do laundry. I don't know, maybe I'm making an excuse to be gross. Um, so, before I start on the passenger side, I'm going to throw the seat in, uh, double check the fitment, make sure that I like exactly how it fits uh, with the seat and like sitting in there and whatnot. So, double check that real quick and then start on the passenger side. All right, so the fitment's pretty good. Uh, hopefully you can hear me, he's about to start grinding. So I'm going to talk really quick. Uh, anyway, uh, so the fitment's pretty good. So I'm going to pull these bore bars out and move them over to that side. Uh, and hopefully you can still hear me but move these over to that side, see if they fit perfectly. Uh, that way I can make more of a precise cut on these uh, and I don't have to waste so much uh, like I did on the last ones. And I think I'm good with the fitment over here. Um, it's pretty much identical. Uh, this top bar is just a little bit tighter, uh, but they're pretty much exactly square, so that's good. Um, it's about the same tightness as that side. I just hammered that place or that one into place over there. Uh, but the fitment's fine with the seat, uh, so I'm going to keep it all and whatnot. Um, the seat is farther back, so this bend kind of is like more with you type of thing rather than blocked completely by the seat like it is on that side. Uh, it shouldn't be an issue though. There's still plenty of room to get in and out of the car. Uh, so that should be good. So I'm just gonna copy these dimensions and make them for this side uh, and then hurry up and weld these in. So I finished cleaning up the notches on this side. Um, I did make kind of a separate notch um, for the sill bar. That way I can join it more to the sill bar and it doesn't just sit on top of it. So as you can see, uh, you just notch it a little bit more at this uh, kind of extreme angle. Uh, that way I can actually sit on here and it doesn't have any gaps. Um, that way I can weld it pretty much fully all the way around here um, as well as to the front lateral. And same thing back here. Um, so I just have to do the same thing to the driver's side bar. Um, and then they'll be good to actually weld in. And the notch is done. This one came out pretty easy as well. Uh, there's a tiny bit of a gap, but it's not bad at all. Um, I mean, it's like under a sixteenth of an inch. Uh, everything else is super tight. Uh, it fits really well, so... Um, now I just actually have to clean up the ends um, with like the stripping disc. Uh, that way I can actually weld them on um, and make sure that that bar fits well because Notching it for that did lower it about like a half an inch uh, or so, so that's kind of good in the scheme of things because that's going to give me about half an inch more clearance. Um, but at the same time, it might have adjusted where my notches need to go, so I might need to get rid of a little bit of material on uh, the top bars. Just got the passenger side fully welded in. Uh, I didn't show any of it, uh, just weird positions. I'll actually show some of my welding on that side. Um, yeah, because I still have all of the driver's side to do. Uh, but yeah, fully welded in. Um, as you can see, it's not TIG. Um, I was kind of tired of spending so much time on each joint. Um, and some of these are really hard to reach. Obviously, like these were pretty easy to get at. Uh, but back there, those are pretty hard to get at. So it would have taken me a long time with TIG. Wasn't that bad with Meg, so that's good. Uh, but yeah, they're fully welded. Was able to bridge it in the center. Uh, as you can see, 
with those. Um, so yeah, pretty strong. You won't even see any of this anyway though. There's a gusset that's gonna go over the whole thing uh, that's required by the rules. Uh, but gonna get started on the driver's side and then once I weld that up, then I'm done. Well, we finally have door bars. Uh, it's pretty cool to finally get done with the door bars or to get to that point because it is like pretty much one of the last steps. Um, so I'm gonna try to knock out some more tonight. I don't know, we'll see. I'll throw that in another video. So next up, we have the eight pillar support bar. So that goes down there where the lower door bar and the sill bar join up. Um, it's gonna come up with a little piece to like right here into the upper door bar. Um, and from there, it's going to pick up a long piece and then come within four inches of the mounting point for the roof bar uh, or the windshield bar, whatever you want to refer to it as. So that'll be hopefully easy to make. Um, I don't know if I'm, I don't think I'm going to put any bends in it. Uh, the rules are kind of like, it's kind of a gray area. It says you can have a bend in that tube, um, but it has to be straight from the side. So I don't know. I'll have to ask Scrutineer, but I'll probably just make it straight. Uh, we'll talk about that though when I actually get to that in that video. Uh, but yeah, this is all I've got for the door bar video. Um, if you guys have any questions, I try to show a lot more of what I was actually doing in this one. Um, so hopefully that helps out some of you guys if you're trying to build your own cage or anything like that. Uh, obviously you don't have to follow the same design as mine. You have a lot of options with door bars, so kind of just come up with what you think would be best. Uh, or you could go the simple route and just do the one bar from up here down Next to there. To oh, there's my radio again. Um, and then you'd be done in like an hour and you'd already have that uh, A pillar support bar done in the same amount of time that I put into this. So you could do it like that too. Uh, anyway, I'll stop talking. Uh, you guys have a good one. I'll see you in the video where I do the, uh, the A pillar bar, I guess.